Joining me now to further discuss U.S.-China relations is our current affairs commentator, Victor Gao. Victor, great to see you. Um, uh, talk to me about this flurry of activity. I uh, just had the vice premier here in Washington yesterday meeting with the secretary of state and the president. Today, Rex Tillerson on his way to China, and Trump will be heading your way in November. What can we expect as an outcome from the current visit by Tillerson and, of course, the anticipated visit of Trump in November? Thank you very much for having me. I think Secretary of State Tillerson's upcoming visit to China is very, very important. Uh, it will cover two aspects. One is the preparation for the state visit by President Donald Trump in early November. Second part will be the substantive discussion with the Chinese counterparts, especially focusing on the escalating tension and the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. And I think both are very, very important because I think uh, while the Chinese leaders could discuss the Korean situation with Secretary of State Tillerson, the uh, climax will happen when President uh, Donald Trump will be here in Beijing in uh, early November for the first state visit of President Donald Trump to China. And uh, secondly, I would say that the situation on the Korean Peninsula is really fast reaching a uh, turning point. Something needs to be done, and we in China still stand firmly for peace and diplomacy and dialogue and negotiations. And we hope the United States will agree with China that that is the best way forward. But it will really take many parties to tangle together on the deterioration on the Korean Peninsula situation. And I think Secretary Tillerson and especially uh, President Donald Trump's visits to China will be crucially important. Do you think the relationship is stronger uh, between these two countries, given the situation with the DPRK? It seems Trump has been very generous with his praise towards China of late when it comes to dealing with uh, its neighbor. Well, the uh, China-U.S. political relations uh, are not foolproof. Uh, there are ups and downs. There are occasional hiccups. And I think uh, what's happening on the Korean Peninsula involving DPRK's nuclear crisis is a case in example to test the resilience of China-U.S. relations. And I would say that occasions like this involving major crises are really the occasions where China and the United States at the very top level of the government can demonstrate not only to themselves but also to the rest of the world that China and the United States can get along, that they can work together to overcome whatever differences and problems there are in the bilateral relations between Washington and Beijing, and then they can stay together and work together to achieve the greater good in this case, the denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula. And I would say that we need to give compliment to Secretary of State Tillerson, as well as President Donald Trump, for doing the right thing in coming here to Asia and coming here on a visit to China to talk directly to the Chinese leaders and try their best, together with the Chinese counterparts, to work out a better solution to deal with the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. Of course, they will talk about all the other questions and challenges in China-U.S. relations, and I hope both Secretary of State Tillerson as well as U.S. President Donald Trump will give consistent and coherent messages to the Chinese government here that we can get along and don't create confusion to the Chinese side by really pointing their fingers in different directions without coming up with a consistent and coherent message. On the, cri on the Korean crisis, we need consistency, we need coordination and cooperation between China and the United States before any major progress and breakthrough can be worked out. Well, let's talk a little bit about the thorny issues. You touched on them uh, briefly there. We've got the South China Sea, trade, the deployment of THAAD and the Republic of Korea. Do you expect that they can make any headway on those issues? I hope so, even though the challenges are uh, very great. And uh, uh, China-U.S. relations are not uh, one-dimensional. It covers almost all the aspects of economic trade, educational people-to-people, -people, geopolitical, military cooperations. And there are almost 100 different channels of communication between Beijing and Washington. And you also mentioned at the very beginning of this part of your program 
that the Chinese Vice Prime Minister Liu Yandong uh, is in New York and in Washington, D.C. with big Chinese delegations, think tanks, and uh, distinguished the Chinese persons uh, visiting the United States, talk to their counterparts, try to enhance people-to-people -people, uh, dialogue and uh, mutual understanding. All these are very, very important parts of China-U.S. Uh, understanding and dialogue. And, of course, we have major issues, including the huge trade imbalance in China-U.S. trade, but it will take a lot of wisdom and creativity to come up with better solutions. For example, I've been advocating that we continue to increase the size of China-U.S. trade from 600 billion U.S. dollars to about 1 trillion, and in the additional amount to be added to China-U.S. trade, the United States need to do a good job in selling more goods to the Chinese market. The potential here in China is huge. We can accommodate many, many things that the United States want to sell the goods to, but you need to come up with the goods that you can sell to the Chinese market. So it really is very much interactive. It will not work if, for example, one country uses unilateral ways to impose sanctions against the other or resort mm -hmm. to trade protectionist measures. And I think we need to be very much looking forward and focused on the huge potential in China-U.S. trade and economic relations, as well as the benefits we can get from closer partnership. Victor, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for joining us from Beijing. I appreciate it.